Halloween is over. How was your Halloween? It was good. It was our first Halloween with Linus, and I made his costume and mine. I made Linus an octopus. How'd you make that octopus costume? I used felt, so I made him like a vest top with a hoodie, and then that's where the octopus eyes are at the hood. And then I made him gray pants as well, and six octopus legs filled with cotton and wires so that when you curl the leg it'll kind of mimic the octopus legs so i made six of those and linus's legs are the two other octopus's legs i didn't know you put wire in it so you could curve the leg yeah Isn't that dangerous can it poke him it poked me once but he didn't really move so it was fine you should tell everybody about the trouble you had about the sizing oh uh, okay his pants were fine though his pants i used his current pants and use that as a pattern to make the new octopus pants but the top was a little bit harder like the neck part i just couldn't get it on him so i kept having to cut the neckline but in the end it was just so troublesome that you suggested i make it into a vest so i just cut it straight down the middle are you living the dream is this what you always dreamt of being able to create halloween costumes for your child it was fun. I enjoyed making it. I think one of the hard parts is figuring out what to make and like taking the time to do it. But I think it's really fun. But I think another problem too actually is how are we going to store it? Because I don't like to keep things. But I don't want to throw this away. Wait, we're going to keep his octopus costume for a whole year? No, I don't know. And I mean, I'm assuming you're not going to have him wear the same thing next year. No, he's going to be something else. But I feel bad because I already took time working on it well i don't feel bad i just feel like it's a waste because he only wore for like five minutes <laughs> and why did he only wear it for five minutes so we went to a halloween party that our friend allison planned it was at a park and then she invited a lot of church friends and a lot of the church friends have kids um some don't and then we and then we had pizza and then we went around giving candy to each other so it was really fun. Um, it was a little bit cold. So I think that's why Linus only wore his costume for like a couple minutes. And I think it's just more comfortable for him to be air gold by you. Uh, didn't you also do a photo booth? Yeah, Allison asked me if I can do a photo backdrop. And I've always wanted to do like a floral backdrop with using dried flowers and like flowers that we're not really used to seeing. I don't even know how to describe this style. I just saw it on Instagram once and I thought, oh, I want to do that. I use like this really vibrant purple and vibrant yellow color. I wanted to still make it kind of Halloween like, but nothing like creepy or spooky. I try to stay away from eucalyptus because I feel like I use, I use that too much and I want to try something new, but I really don't know what type of flowers or leaves I used. And then I used cheesecloth and I dyed it nude, mauve, and a wine color. And then I used that cheesecloth and I hung it on our um, backdrop to create a kind of drapery effect. I thought it looked nice. I think you need to get a more industrial strength frame. I agree. So I use this like plastic metal backdrop I found on Amazon. It's like really cheap. It's like $36. It looks like a mic stand. You kind of just raise it as high as you want. Not as high as you want, maybe like eight feet. And then it's held together left and right by poles. So that's like a good option that's very compact. Ideally, it would be nice to have a wooden frame so the wind won't like move it. Because that's the problem we had at the park because the wind kept blowing um, the backdrop to the ground. But the problem with that is we don't have storage for a frame like that. And another problem is every time we transport a frame that could be made out of wood that will help withstand the wind, and like all the wear and tear of events, I would need like a bigger car to transport it. And that's just something we don't have. Unless, unless you want to invest in a van, I'm fine with that. Interesting. If we have a van, I guess we need more kids too to fill up the van. Yes, we can fill it up with kids. But I've also like rented vans for the events I've done. So that was like one, two, like three events where I spent like, a hundred dollars renting a van and was it worth it it was worth it for the event because we didn't have a van 
one of the reasons why I think that you need to get more industrial strength stands is because I tripped over a wire which was holding your stands up and it caused the stands to just fall down. And I was holding Linus at the time. I, I was like, okay, th this shouldn't be happening. So the backdrop didn't initially have that wire, but because the wind kept blowing it down, our friend John, who's like a handyman, and our friend Derek, who's a handyman as well and also an engineer, they came up with the idea to hook up the backdrop to the grass using a wire, which worked. The wind didn't blow it down. It was a little scary, but it did mean that no one saw the wire in the back. So if you look at the backdrop from the side, it's like a triangle. And like, yeah, there's a wire in the back, so the wind wouldn't blow the backdrop. You weren't the first person to trip on it, actually. Who? Oh, really? Who was the first person? Harper. <laughs> <laughs> she's like a year and a half <laughs> i didn't see the wire girl. i didn't see the sorry harper putting you on blast uh i i didn't see the wire there so i guess it did its job yeah no it, it was it was it was bad because it could have been dangerous i i agree al you did a really good job planning that party i think it went well and everyone had a great time but jess even though we went to this halloween party and you dressed up linus as an octopus you didn't Instagram a picture of Linus wearing the octopus costume. Are you going to do it? You're right. Um, maybe. But I just posted an Instagram of Linus. So I feel like it'd be too much if I posted another one. Yeah, what's going on with your Instagram? Instead, you posted a picture of Linus wearing uh, the glasses that Amy gave us. And he's wearing a beanie and this this jacket. What, what is this? I like that picture. I just wanted to post it. I did like that picture. Um, but what's your Instagram plan right now? Mm, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to post. But I think I just want to share the art that I make. Whether it is events or wedding stationery. Or just Linus and her family. Just any art and crafts that I do. So I'll try and post more of that stuff, but it's, it's, it will be a challenge for me because I don't take progress photos and I get lazy posting and taking good pictures of what I need to take to post. But I think I want to try doing that more to share the art that I do. Yeah, I think you should definitely start posting more. Thanks. Okay, we'll see how it goes. A uh, quick update since our last conversation about my Instagram at dive in dig deep dig in dive deep at dive in dig deep it's still a little bit out of control i have not been able to share the reviews as quickly as i'm getting the books meaning the books keep coming at a breakneck speed and i cannot keep up but i think i'll be able to catch up this month because before i would just post like one review a week and the rest would be pictures but i think this month i'm just gonna you know what if I'm ready to post a review, I'm just going to post the review. It feels like it makes sense to do one a week, though. It does make sense until you realize that, wait, that means that I'm only posting four reviews a month. That's and, fine. Well, sorry. that's fine. It does sound fine. But the problem is I get way more than four books a month. And so by the time I post four reviews, I have like... 10 more books that still need to be reviewed. And then the backlog just keeps catching up and I'm missing books that they want to send me because I'm behind. So I want to be in a constant flow of like getting books and posting reviews so I don't feel like I need to play catch up. I feel like it's okay because you're using your time to do these, to read the book, first of all, and then to review it, which takes time. So I don't want, like, does it like stress you out or overwhelm you thinking, oh, I got to read these two books within three days. No, 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 no. It doesn't stress me out. And see, that's the thing. I can read the book quickly and write the review quickly. The problem is that I'm just holding on to these reviews, not posting them, but they're ready to go. And so, you know, normally, like I'm not going to get books until I post that review. And so when I'm just hoarding the reviews and they're ready to go, 
I feel like, okay, now this is, this is wasting time now because I should be posting them and continuing the cycle. Hmm. I don't know. I still don't really agree. <laughs> <laughs> also, think about it this way. Say you become like the prime guy to go to to find book resources. Nice. And that there is an author out there who wants you to review their book. Right. Hypothetically. Right, right. And so say he wants to do that and he'll give you a free book. But then there's maybe consider like, oh, if he gives you a book and you're like 10 books behind or backlogged and people know that somehow, he's willing to pay you a certain amount to up his book to the top of your priority so that you will review it right away. Wait, <laughs> wait a minute. You just, you're changing the game now. Like I... I don't know if I want to monetize it in that way. All right, then don't include this part. No, we should we should talk about no. this. This is okay. Another scenario: What if we grow our family, and you have all these books to read, and I'm just like, Aaron, we got kids. Why you keep reading books? <laughs> <laughs> um, just we talked about this before that I will not l- allow that to become a problem. My problem is not reading and reviewing. My problem is that I'm not posting in a timely manner. Like the the thing that's holding me back is because I decided in my mind arbitrarily to say, oh, I think I'll only post one review a week. And th- that's creating a problem. I feel that once I start posting more than one review a week, I'll no longer have this problem. Just let me experiment this with this for a month or okay. two. And then I... You know, hopefully by December or January, I can have a clean slate and the cycle will be like a well-oiled machine. All right. All right. I'm looking forward to it. Also, I'm looking to my right and you have like a stack of 12 books. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All those books I already read and reviewed. But I don't care if you read and review it. I just care that it's just not on the floor laying out. (laughs) We Three weeks ago... We organized our library, our bookshelf, so you can fit all your books. And I said, no more books. And like, these books are just so, like, just laying here. They don't have a home. But <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so, it's too much. Those books are all done. I, I need to take pictures and post them. The review is already done. That, that's what I'm talking about. Like, I just need to, you know, once I post it, then it's like I can put it on the shelf or give it away. And I do plan to give books away. All right, let's give it away. It will be done. Just just let me figure it out. Let okay. me figure it out. Okay. I can do this. Okay, I can do you this. can do it. You can do it. Good job, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your support. Your support of at dive in dig deep on Instagram. Uh, speaking of my book Instagram account, last time we mentioned that I was like, I was coveting Amy Lowe's Bible project book. And it's now in my possession. Not Amy's, but a copy of that book. So we mentioned it last podcast that we were looking into this Bible project book. And one of our listeners, Auntie Katie Lee, listened to the podcast and she gave us a copy of her Bible project book. So she has two copies and she said that she had one extra one. And when she heard about us talking about it, wanting it, she gifted it to us. That was really nice of you, Auntie Katie. Thanks for yeah, doing thank that. thank you. Um, yeah, apparently Auntie Katie supported the Bible Project when they were doing a Kickstarter for these books. And I guess by supporting, they ended up giving her two books. And so thanks for gifting us this book. Jess, last time when we said this, you said that if I get this book for free, then I can keep my books. I don't remember. <sighs> keep which books? All your books? Yeah, all the books. Hmm. I don't remember saying that. Uh, and, and I don't listen to our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Jess, did you listen to the new music that I made with Philip and Jen and friends? Yes, you play it like every single week. Got to get those view counts up. Right. Are, are you happy with what you produced? Yeah. Um, okay, so this is what happened. I produced music with Philip and Jen. I've been talking about this for quite some time. I think they came over earlier this year. It must have been like springtime or something and they recorded with me during the summer and fall. I was producing it 
polishing it up, getting guest vocalists, and even my friends at the Kamaso Quartet were able to send me their string parts, and I just released it. It's called My King Has Crushed the Curse of Death. There are three songs on it. Jess, what do you think about it? I really like the album you made. I think it you utilize the singers very well. And I feel like when you added the Kamaso Quartet, it really added a lot <laughs> to the music. I, I just enjoy the strings. Like I hear the strings that you add during English worship service. So even like when you put it in like an MP3 form, like I could tell it was actual strings and not like you manipulating your program to create like fake sounding strings. It felt really full and it feels really nice. And, and, and it's a very good album. I think you did a good job. Thank you. The vibe is perfect for this kind of fall going into winter season. Uh, that's why I wanted to release it uh, around this time. It actually officially came out on October 31st. Um, I also created like a companion booklet, which is a little bit silly. Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see my companion booklet? No, I didn't know you even made one. Okay, I want see you. It. Can you look at it now? I want you. I want you to look at this, and then I want you to give live feedback. Oh, I hate <laughs> as you critiques. look at it. I am so bad at critiquing and using my words. I'm not a graphic designer, but I know how to make junk. Okay, so I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the cover. It does has a title. My king has crushed the curse of death. Below it has Bulwark Ministries. Bulwark Ministries is the name that I'm giving my worship music ministry. I mean, it's it's sort of silly, but I feel like since I'm producing stuff and putting stuff out there, and eventually, you know, I wanna I wanna put my own original worship songs out there that it needs some sort of title. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so right now I am going to critique Aaron's design abilities and skills on what he created for this album. I'm not a graphic designer. No, no, you are not. But you do pretty well for a non-creative. I mean, you still are a creative. You still are a creative. Anyway, okay. So you have a heading. I think. Um, I think the words can be positioned a little bit better. Like you have my king in the first line, and the second line has just the word has. Third line has the word crushed. I think if you just like shrunk the font, and to make it a little bit more balanced, because right now it's kind of like. The alignment isn't is very rig- rigid, rigid, rigid. It's very rigid. I think Bulwark Ministries on the bottom. It's it's, it's okay, it's not a big deal. There's like kind of a hierarchy problem of like what's the title. I mean, if I didn't know Bulwark Ministries was your, then I then I wouldn't. I I think there just needs to be a hierarchy. The background um is a photo of like trees. I think it's fine. It's not really super engaging. It's just trees and kind of one tone. Opening it up, I think you could still play with the wording. It's a little rigid still with the text. The layout, I think, is fine. I think you probably picked a template, I'm assuming. I'm not a graphic designer. Yeah, the template's fine. Oh, yeah, I think uh, I think you just got to fix. I think because my king has crushed the curse of death. That is really long. I think you just have to make it feel like it's not very wordy, even though it is wordy. Picture wise, I see the vibe you're going for. It's very nature like. Although I see that you picked the same photo for the next two pages. And you caught that. Uh, yeah, you gotta change that. Also, I think nature photos are fine. Maybe think about instead of just seeing it as like, I'm going to take like a medium shot where like you can see the sky and the trees. Think about doing like a really close up one of like just the trees or something and like a really far off one where the trees are smaller. Like play with like proportions a little bit more. So it kind of create interest. Sorry, I'm giving you all bad critiques. <laughs> I think because you're my husband, that's why I would give you just bad critiques. What? No, I don't know. Um. So Lord from Sorrows, Deep I Call, that page, is, the photo's fine. Um, I think with the font for the lyrics, it could be a serif font would look a little bit nice and formal because right now it just seems a little bit, um, it doesn't feel as grand or I think the grand is not the right word. I don't feel like, I feel like it's kind of bland. I feel like if you did like a Baskerville font, 
or Cambria. I think it would look nice. I'm glad you didn't do it all caps. That's a good choice for the lyrics. The Shirley Goodness, Shirley Mercy. I think you did a really good job with the um, the title. Spacing out the title. That's good. I think overall good job, Erin. I mean, it is what it is. Like a lyrics page. I think for a musician, you're, you're doing a really good job putting your artwork out there. See, the hard thing about being an independent producer is that you're stuck doing everything for yourself. And of course, Jess, I know that you can help me with this, but I'm not going to ask you to help me make, uh, you know, the silly lyric booklet that I, I'm just doing for fun. And so how I see it is that, yeah, I, I do want to grow in my creative skills and abilities. I, I think all your feedback is absolutely correct because all those things like I actually thought about as I was making it mm. and granted, I should have spent more time on this, like this lyric booklet, like honestly, like I didn't finish the final mixes until maybe two weeks before my deadline. And so that's not a lot of, of time to put into making this booklet. I think if I had more time, I personally think I could have done a better job. And yeah, all those things that you mentioned, like the title, like I, I know that like, yeah, it's so wordy. Um, and so that's why I tried to stick with them with the the motif of like, okay, that it's just going to be like going text going down, you know, like that's what you're going to see. And I tried to make it very clear, like, yeah, I did that on purpose. So that's why you see the title across all the pages and the photos. I think if I put more time into it, I probably, yeah, should have found better pictures that were maybe more interesting, especially because it's a very visual medium. However, I am proud with what I did. I think that it is an extra thing. You know, it's like a bonus thing. And I think for it to be an extra bonus thing, um, it's, it's nice to have, especially because I want people to have a way to look at the lyrics, visualize the album feel a little bit in their minds. Because when we release stuff online, we lose a lot of that visual connection that we typically had before with CDs or vinyls, you know, there was a really strong visual component. And so with this thing, I was trying to, to get a vibe going. And I think I succeeded in that. Jess, I appreciate your critique. I'm going to take it. And hopefully the next time I make something, it will be even better. Thanks. Good job. The, the good thing about Issue, and that's the platform that I used to, to put this out. Um, it's actually the same platform that Jess, you and I used for our annual magazines. Um, is that you can actually like make changes after you published it, re-upload the document, and the links stay the same. I mean, the URL stays the same. Um, it's just a really convenient way to make changes while not messing anything up. And so actually, I, I actually made revisions to this maybe like two or three times. And so the one I have online right now is like the version three, which was really convenient because, yeah, you know, like I... I don't know, I'm doing just experimenting. And so it's great to have that safety net. I think throughout my life, I've been trying to grow in my creativity, uh, in my artistic abilities, in my talent to make things. And I guess it aligns with a question that we got. Just maybe you can answer this. Uh, this is a listener question. Please continue to send us your questions. You can get them to us personally, or you can reach out to us via DM on our Instagram at SVRGNLA. But here's the question. How do you hope to encourage Linus in being creative as he grows up? I think what I'm looking forward to with Linus and with all our kids is figuring out or helping them figure out what they enjoy, whether it is doing something creative like music or art or dance, or something sports-like, like whether it's basketball, soccer, badminton, karate, just taking him to classes and figuring out what he wants to do and what he's good at. I know that'll take a lot of time, but I think that's something that will be fun to help him explore. Or it doesn't even have to be sports or creativity, creative stuff. It could be like coding. Yeah, I think I agree. 
I am very thankful for my parents who gave me the opportunity to, I guess, learn new things, try new things, experiment with new things, whether that was paying for the lessons or driving me to the events. My parents had a huge role to play in my artistic interests. And I think for Linus, um, yeah, we just want to give him opportunities and see what he enjoys doing. Yeah, I think exposing him to different things. It's okay that if he doesn't like music or art, I think I'd be okay with that. Yeah, that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. I think being around you and me as his parents, he'll be already be exposed to it, but there's way more stuff out there than just what you and me have to offer. And yeah, he's totally going to be his own person too. It's not like he's going to be a total copy of what you and I like to do. And so I think it'll take time, but I think it will be fun as we learn with him along the way. So for the month of October, the Sola Network was focusing on worship, creativity, and art. And I ended up writing several articles for them. Uh, you can find them at sola.network, and then you can just search for my name, and the articles should show up. But the thing about writing articles is that I never really grew up thinking that I would be writing about stuff. I think blogging maybe started experimenting with it a while ago, a long time ago, like 10 years ago. Um, but only recently have I begun taking it kind of more seriously. And I think the thing is with Linus too, is that while a lot of our initial habits and interests can be formed when we're children, Sometimes they morph and change and lead us down different paths that maybe we didn't expect them to come to. And so even though I never saw myself as being a writer when I was growing up, um, it's something that I like to have fun now doing. And I also see that as a creative art form. And so having Linus just kind of also be open to experimenting and trying new different things is also a good way where I think we can get him to be creative throughout life. So what type of articles did you write for Sola? I wrote articles that I think reflect a little bit about who I am and my background. They were mostly centered upon worship music ministry, specific for Asian American worship music ministry. But I also wrote some pertaining to art and trying to be creative Christians. I'll link to all of them in the show notes. Well, I don't know if we're going to be able to get another podcast episode out before Thanksgiving or Christmas. Christmas time is here. I wonder if this will be the last Thanksgiving and Christmas with just you, me, and Linus. <laughs>